Hello everyone and welcome to The Build Show. I'm John Peitzman, JP Certified High Performance Coach and creator of The Build Framework. I help individuals and teams all over the world thrive in their personal and professional lives. And as the host of this show, our aim is to help transform lives one guest at a time. How do we do that? We do that by having amazing guests. And today is no different. We have with us Robin Dernica. Robin is the CEO and founder of Zen Show one of Japan's most highly awarded and innovative recruitment firms. He is also a martial artist, a breathwork and mindfulness teacher, and an executive coach who is passionate about transforming the lives of the clients he serves. He's recently relocated back to Australia, where he is originally from, after living in Japan for over 25 years. Zen Show means whole life, which is one lived with purpose and presence. Robin recognizes that the connections we create change lives. And his mission is to fulfill his why by helping others fulfill theirs, which I love. Robin, welcome to The Build Show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so right. much. So I love the mission of your why is actually helping other people to fulfill their why. So yeah. And pretty it, amazing. It's, it's something that um, I only really thought about maybe five or six years ago yeah. with regards to what is my why. It's that famous book by Simon Sinek uh, right. called Start With Why, right, I think exactly. it's called. And, what I, what I uncovered was that my why had actually been formed much, much earlier on, you know, probably perhaps in my early teens. Right. But I hadn't been able to really articulate it until only quite right. recently. And so my current uh, role as uh, CEO of this uh, recruitment firm, Zentio Agency, yeah. is very much um, the way in which I express that. Right. Or live that. Yeah, and talk about being of service, right? Yeah, right. It's amazing. So what are you excited about as we sit here right now today? Well, aside from sitting in this yeah. uh, in this Absolutely. sofa, this so exciting, speaking with right? you, yeah. it's definitely the highlight of my day well, so far. Appreciate that. Um, you know, there's a, there's it's a lot. Early. It's early. It's <laughs> early. <laughs> Give myself an hour. That's right, right. Uh, look, there's there's so much going on in my life right now, and and, and certainly um, when it comes to Zencho Agency, the company in which I manage, um, we're in a really good spot right now. And there's a lot of change going on. You know, the situations that have been affecting all of us, the COVID situation, and so on, and it's really. I guess highlighted the importance of looking at the way we work and what's the future of work and how are we delivering our services. And right. it, it really shined a light on our processes, our practices, our policies, and how we build our community. And you know, we've had some ups and downs sure. al along the way. And um, I'm really happy to say that we're in a really good spot right now. And it's exciting for me every day, like, like, like I mentioned. I'm, I'm living my why every day. I, this, my sense of fulfillment is, is really happening on a daily basis. It's not always great. <laughs> and I wouldn't say there's no, uh, it's, it's not always about being happy, but the sense of fulfillment I get from what I do each day is mm -hmm. definitely um, all moving in the right direction. So. Well, when you do what you love, that happens, right? Yeah, right. When you're in that passion, you're in that place. So um, I love having conversations surrounded by the BUILD framework, basically, right? So we'll walk through that. For those of you who still don't know what BUILD stands for, it's an acronym. It stands for BUILD RELATIONSHIPS, UNDERSTAND THE BUSINESS, IMPLEMENT STRATEGIES, LEAD AND INSPIRE, AND DELIVER EXCELLENCE. And what I love about this show is that even though the BUILD framework is consistent, all of the guests have a unique journey with it, right? And a unique perspective and unique insights. So let's, let's start with B, right? BUILD yeah. RELATIONSHIPS. What, what are some relationships that are the most important relationships for you in the, the journey you've been on to your success so far? Look, I think it goes without saying that uh, you don't exist in isolation from your right. environment and your community. And, and, and That's why B is first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, to answer that question, I, I guess it makes sense to maybe let's look at different, different areas of my life. I mean, yeah. I'm playing so many roles from, yeah. from, from CEO to coach to student to teacher to obviously husband, son, brother, father, all, all these type of roles. And, and giving attention to those roles um, is really important to me. So definitely relationships outside of work impact my relationships inside of work as well. Right. But if I'm just focusing on, on, on the, for, this, for the matter of uh, this question, just focusing on work uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, um, you know, I run the recruitment firm and we currently have about 35 consultants on the ground wow. in Tokyo. Um, not all in Tokyo, but in Japan. Right. And we recently launched in London. We have three great recruiters on the ground there, three great consultants on the ground there. So we're around 35 to 40 people in total. And it's a professional services firm. The, 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 our recruiters, we, we, we did something very different um, in late 2015. We completely 
change the paradigm of how recruitment firms engage the recruitment consultants that they work with. Right. And it spread like wildfire. It really cr created kind of, kind of went, went a bit uh, uh, on social media and the way people were talking about what we were doing in the industry. This what was, was the main change? I mean, what was the kind of the shift? Yeah, well, typically recruiters had worked as employees for right. recruitment firms and they had generally received a commission of around 30% on average right, okay. of the revenue that they generate. Right. And in return, you know, the company takes care of all the back office and, and does yep. all the rest of it. And you know, uh, around 2013, 14, I started getting a sense of a lot of dissatisfaction amongst senior recruiters in the market. They weren't loving the game anymore. The, the art of recruitment was becoming, was going too far down the road of becoming a, a pure science. It was all about KPIs. It was all right, about right. metrics and numbers. And, and you as a recruiter didn't matter so much. You were this, Important, but just a cog in the wheel of, of, of delivering this service to clients who then pay the, pay the bill. And I thought there had to be a change. This had to change because maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago, that made sense. But in today's age with social media and you know, the advent of all these techn technological changes yeah, that we've experienced. The world's a different world. And then you add COVID onto that. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the, the argument or the, or the ability for a company, a recruitment firm, to justify keeping 70, if not 80% of the revenue that your people are generating right. didn't really fly with me anymore. Right, doesn't really feel right. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, 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 the unfortunate thing was too, people didn't have much of a choice. They, had, they either look for a different place with similar you know, bells and whistles, yeah. or they start their own thing. And I'll be the first to tell you, when I, starting your own thing doesn't necessarily mean more time or more right. money. Um, <laughs> exactly. And if that's the reason you want to get into it, I, I suggest you, you take a good, long, hard look at, uh, at, at your reasons. Um, but I got a lot of inspiration from the New York real estate brokerage market and saw that some of the top brokerages were attracting the best agents. All the agents typically were independent contractors and not employees. And these agents would take home the lion's share of the revenue they generated. Right. Yeah. And they would pay a, a monthly fee. A monthly platform fee, fee to the to the brokerage in return for for all the administrative support, sure. uh, coaching, uh, all the all the apps, all the the whole platform, all of that, the marketing and, and so on, research and whatnot. And I thought, could this work in recruitment? Could this work in Japan? And of course, everyone told me, not a chance. It's not going to work, especially right. not in Japan. Right. You know, not a country known for you know its its quick ability to, uh, right. to change innovation. Innovation. Yeah. I mean, it was obviously innovative in the yeah. '80s and so on, and sure. um, it's lost a bit of uh, that appeal. But um, in general, the idea of change um, is not something so readily adopted. But anyway, I thought, look, there had to be a, a, a way. There had to be. There has to be another way. There has to be a third option, a genuine third option. And so I spent the next six months like a, like a madman there working on compensation plans and ideas and really looking at what my why was and how could this all come together. And to cut a long story short, in around September 2015, I presented this new um, paradigm, if you will, this blue ocean paradigm, this new, new way of approaching recruitment to my existing three employees at the time who were all on the traditional type right, of right, pay right. scheme. And I said, guys, we're going to open up the business and we're going to go into this new area. And this is the way we're going to do it. If you want to stay on the old way, I'm happy to grandfather you in. Right. And they're all like, screw that. We want to be on yeah, the, yeah, on yeah, the exactly. new way. And so we went from three people in October 2015 to our current 38 or, right. or whatever that might be. And uh, we're just getting started. And it really came down to, you know, typically I saw management of recruitment firms thinking, you know, how little can I pay you? and still keep you. Right. And that seemed to be around 30% of right. revenue. But I wanted to flip that around. How much can I actually pay you and still be a profitable business? Right. And that, that little simple, I guess, play Help them words, find their why, right? Yeah. Have them be successful exactly. as well. That will help you. And tied in with that was abundance. what was our mission statement and every other professional services firm, be it a law firm, recruitment firm, consulting firm, the mission statement is generally some variant of, um, you know, we exist to help our clients succeed. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. And, but to me, it, it didn't seem so authentic. And I, 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 it, it put the client as the, as, you know, on center stage and kind of dismissed the, the very people who build your business Doing and work, that are delivering yeah. the service. Right. And so Zencho Agency's mission is very clear. It's to serve as a platform through which our people can achieve their goals in right. life, whatever is important to them. And if I help them succeed, if I can create the right space in which they can achieve, you know, live their own why and achieve their goals, 
then I will get what I want. And the great result is our clients, our customers that we serve get fantastic service. Right. So you actually flipped the whole script on how you build relationships in the business world, right? Right. You actually made them more authentic. You went after, you know, helping them discover, you know, what you can do to help them get their success. And yeah, that's really amazing. And, and, and it also, it, it's, it's, it keeps me honest as well because I can only succeed if I help enough of my people succeed first. Right. Because the, the whole paradigm is flipped. That's how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so on the building of relationships, mm. you were talking about like in the work context, I mean, how, what are some of those relationships that you were kind of elaborating on or talking about? So yeah, when you have a community, and that's what I like to call my company really is a community, because mm -hmm. that's what really any company is. I mean, yeah. it's just a, an arbitrary term we yeah. use, company. Um, it's a community of say, let's say 35 to 40 people. And the only way this organism can function is in, in the way that we invite, encourage, respect um, everyone's voice. We have a, a, a zero hierarchy, it's a flat organization. We treat everyone as a partner and where everyone's voice is heard and encouraged and valued. And so my role as CEO is, is really transformed to more of a coach, which is why I've done all these coaching courses and, right. um, and, and speaking with a lot of help from, from yourself. Um, because I feel that the degree to which people feel engaged, the degree to which people feel a sense of trust with each other, that is absolutely critical to anything else that happens in the company. We, we can have the best service, the best this, the best that. Right. It's not going to matter unless people are getting along, unless there's trust, unless there's genuine collaboration, unless there's a genuine feeling of investment in each other's success. Yep. And somehow, strangely, not perfectly, but we've been able to, to develop a, a community spirit that is relatively unseen in the recruitment business world. Right. That's amazing. So you literally have the building relationships as the foundation for your entire business. It's the most important thing. Right. Yeah. Which is why it's first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's something, it's, uh, you know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here or, or you're questioning, but it's definitely something you don't move on from. It's not like this, uh, you know, the build framework. It's right. not necessarily just this linear nope. thing. It's that oh, centrifugal we're, looping we're, as we we've, we've about, done, right? We've done yep. relationships. Now I can forget about relationships exactly. and nope. do this. It's always, You're always coming in back. Motion. And where 100%. I've, um, moving back to Australia after 25 years in Japan, I knew there would be some impact with the fact my presence isn't physically on the ground sure. in Tokyo. And we have a great team there managing things, that's fine. But where I actually felt a bit of negative impact was when I was just busy getting my life sorted back here yeah. in Australia. But I kind of took my eye off the ball a little bit in terms of just keeping in touch with people, people I would just see in the office yeah, and insane. touch base with. Um, mm -hmm. I told myself, well, I'll just pick up the phone and do video calls and all of this, but I let that slip a little bit and it made a difference. It made an impact, yeah. not, not in a good way. Right. And so I, I realized just how important it is to maintain this idea of relationships. Just pick up the phone, how are you doing? Foster Speak them. Speak with each of my people um, on a regular basis. Awesome. Which leads to you then, understand the business, right? Mm. So you have a lot of understandings, right, of the business. What, what's something in that category that you think is appropriate to share with the audience today about understanding the business or words of wisdom in that category that you think would help others, you know, on their journey? Yeah, look, I think understanding the business, yes, of course you have to understand the, the, the ins and outs of the product or the service that you offer. Right, a good um, idea. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> helps, <laughs> that helps. It's good, 101, it's good, right? it's good, good okay. to start with that, I guess. Um, but I, again, never lose sight of how your business or your service is, is delivered and the people that are delivering that because it's, it's really a two-way street. The relationship you have with your employees or your you know, consultants or whatever, the people that are working with you. Your team. Yeah. You're, you're a team and you know, yes, you're paying them money, but in exchange, they're giving you their expertise, their time and their commitment. And it really is a symbol. And they're building uh, your relationship. relationship and well, your business, 100%. right? Yeah, yeah it, it can't your exist. Your brand. My company can't exist without the people in it. It's, it's not like they come and join my company. There is no company without them. Right. It's this living, breathing ecosystem. And, and we have so much diversity. I think we have, God, I think we have, I don't know, it's like at least 12 nationalities um, wow. um, our consultants are from. And it's, um, it's, it's beautiful. There's so much so many unique individuals and so much uh, diversity, yet we all seem to share this common, common goal 
of just trying to be a great community that can deliver great work. And each person, I mean, just seeing people able to now spend more time with their kids or doing this or doing that, they have so much more freedom to, to work on their own terms. And I like to use the line, um, our people are in business for themselves, but not by themselves. Right, and oh, that's really that. one of the, the key differences, I think. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I answered your no, question that's a, at all. No, that's a great <laughs> understanding the business, right? You're talking about understanding the business. I love how you did the <laughs> centrifugal looping just with that. It's like understand how important relationships are, right? Right. And understand that you know you are a business mm. of people, mm. and they're mm. you know in business, but not like you said by themselves. I and I would say understanding. Understand that you you know you, I I feel. If someone feels I've gone further than them, it's only because I've made more mistakes. I've made more mistakes. <laughs> I've, I've been doing, if I've been doing this longer than someone else, it only means I've made more mistakes. And right. I've learned, hopefully, learned uh, from those mistakes. And something I, 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 I definitely have um, developed further for myself over the years is an understanding that there's, there's always more to learn. There's always more to learn, yes. and you don't know everything. In fact, you may not, even what you think you know might be entirely wrong. And it might change, exactly, yeah. even and if it is right seek out, time. Seek out. Um, everyone has value to offer. Seek out people. If you're, what did someone once say? If you're, the, if you're the smartest person in the room, <laughs> you're in the wrong room. Exactly. Right? So um, I love being surrounded by people who have a lot more knowledge and expertise on, on so many topics than I do. Right. So right. No, yeah, I think that's, that's really great. important. That's a great understanding mm. as well, which leads to I, implement strategies. You've implemented a ton of them, um, what are some strategies that you find you know, to be successful that you'd like to share with the audience today, either personally, professionally, both? I mean, the category of implementing strategies. Yeah, well, starting on the, on the personal level, um, and this kind of relates a little bit to my martial arts, of course, yeah. as well, and, and how the principles, uh, for me, the principles of, of martial arts, uh, the principles of, of, of non-dualistic philosophies like Zen or Taoism, um, are one and the same with the principles of entre entrepreneurship yep. and, and business. Which is why general. it's in the name of your company. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, um, you know, this one, one of the, the, the key, an, an area that has really benefited me, I think, in how I approach the business and also um, my own sanity when things don't always go to plan, is this idea of trying to maintain a state of presence as yes. much as possible. And what do I mean by that? It just means try to be 100% engaged on whatever it is I'm doing. Like right now I'm here with you, right. that's all that matters. Yes, I've got this problem or that problem or I'm worried about what I did yesterday or that mistake or what might happen tomorrow. It doesn't, well, to the degree possible, I don't let that enter my mind because right. it's absolutely irrelevant to this moment right here. And it's right all a fantasy anyway because it's it just is. our imagination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, the mind is a wonderful tool right. but it'll generally take you into the past or the future right. and out of this, away from yes. this. And so the more, the more present I am, the, the more I'm able to kind of step out of my story. Mm. And this story that has been woven together, this narrative that uh, has been woven together from all my experiences and perceptions and fears and insecurities and all of yeah. this kind of thing, all has their place. Um, but the more I can just be here and now, I'm able to respond much more appropriately, much more spontaneously to what's actually happening. And I find that that allows me to engage much more authentically with my own community. Yeah. And they people feel that. Well, they, they, feel, they feel that there's no agenda. Yes. I'm not reacting from some story. I still do it, I'm human, right? And I, still, sure. I still, and I catch myself, I think, oh, that was total, just a, a reaction out of some insecurity, you know? Um, or maybe I want my staff to feel I'm smart enough or I'm, I'm good enough to, to be in this position or you know, they should respect me or something like that. These, these little voices will appear sometimes and then I'll mm. react from that. And it's, it's, for me, it's progress to be able to identify that and go, Ooh. Yeah, because you're aware of it. A lot of people exactly. most aren't yeah. even aware yeah. that it's happening. And just to see that what's happening there. So the more I can kind of get myself out the way um, and just be there fully present, I, I find that that projects an authenticity which is, uh, contagious is the right word, but it's certainly engaging and people connect with it. Um, and for me, that's the the number one sales tool, if you will, is just to, right. just to be authentic. And it's yeah. not a tool, if you try and apply it, it's not, it's not genuine. Right. But just be yourself, just be present, just be open to what's actually happening. You might be surprised what comes out of that. Right. And like you say, that applies in your personal life as well as your professional yeah. life. So it's like a, yeah. a strategy that you can implement in both because yeah. it's all about being present. Exactly. When you're home, be home. When you're at work, be at work. Exactly. Right? Not wanting to be the other place exactly. and, and vice versa. Yeah. And I fall short every day, don't right. get me wrong. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a work in progress. Right, there you go. So that leads to um, L, right? So leading and inspiring. So how do you lead and inspire every day? 
Well, using all the stuff we just talked about, you know, and uh, people often say, what's, a, what's your definition of leadership? And, yeah. um, you know, and I, and I don't have like a prepared quote. And almost every single description of leadership I read, I agree with. You know. right. yeah, I get, <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they're all good. So I, don't, I certainly sense. don't have a better one to, to offer or the, a more appropriate one. But just thinking about that now that you've asked, um, what to me I feel is, is, is important for a leader is to be able to go home at the end of the day and look yourself in the mirror, perhaps, mm. figuratively speaking, or, right. actu or, or actually, or, or actually <laughs> and, and just, just be able to tell yourself, look, I, today I made a difference. Today I made a difference. It might be to one person, it might be to the cause, it might be to advancing some, something even just a step further, but I made a difference. And it, that, that kind of relates to a my... A positive diff difference, hopefully. Right? A, a positive yeah. difference, yes. <laughs> hopefully, that's a step forward. I made a difference. <laughs> I made a huge difference. <laughs> oh, no, no. Lost all my people. I'm leaning. <laughs> Which you can, but yeah, it's not right. a good thing, right? Uh, unless, that's, unless that's the step forward, right? right, right exactly. actually make a dramatic change. <laughs> right, but right. Um, look, I, and I, it's related to my idea of success as well. And it's just, have you made a positive difference today? Have you made an impact today? And you know, have you enabled someone to move forward in the in the pursuit of their own why, of their own journey? And these are the things that I really look to um, in myself every day. I, I think, you know, did it, was I able to do that in some way today? I kind of end my day with that, and I start my day with uh, with gratitude. You know, right? What is it? Uh, what is it I'm grateful for? And it's usually you know, the same things I'm saying. Um, yeah. It might just take ten seconds. But uh, it's, it's a nice little anchor, bookmark, bookends yeah. of, of the day. Um, just to start the day with um, what I'm grateful for and to finish the day with a reflection on what impact I was able to have today. Right. Um, yeah. That's amazing. And do you find those um, skills and leadership transferring from the family to the work as well? Or are there different aspects of leadership? Or do you look at it kind of the same way? Across? Sometimes I feel I'm really good in the office and I get home, right. my kids don't listen to me. So. <laughs> but there you go. They're we the hardest, that. they're the toughest <laughs> right. clients. I tell if you, you can sort that out, let me know. That's right. <laughs> they're the toughest clients. I tell That's you. Right. Um, if I can get my kid to do something. Right. No, but uh, I, I try to um, bring that same approach. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the, the work-life balance term. I understand the intention of it and right. um, to give, make sure people are not overworking. That's generally the meaning. Um, but for me, it sets up this kind of dichotomy, this kind of dualism where, you know, work-life balance, there's kind of an implied... Right. One has to be go well, up and down, well, they're separate. One right? is good and one is bad. Right. And when we say work-life balance, the idea is that work is bad and life is good, and so we need more life. And, and obviously, it goes without saying, it, it, it's all life. It's right. one thing. And we have all these different roles that we play mm -hmm. in that one thing. And look, if you're doing, and that's kind of what I also implemented with, with my company, is because everyone is free. They want to work Sunday night, they can. They want to take off all Tuesday and Wednesday, it's up to them. It's right. up to them. It, it, I care less about where you sit or how you, you know, what time. And the number of long. hours or whatever, yeah. it's about delivery, Are you providing right? service? Yeah, exactly. And is your service helping our, our customers? And um, so that's really the most important thing. It's, it doesn't matter about the other stuff too much. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's something that's on my mind is how can I um, be the same person regardless of whether I'm sitting in the office or at home with the family. It's just being myself. And, one of the things, I, I, I used to be a, 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 a chronic goal setter. Yeah. I used to, um, you know, and I still have goals. I do goal setting and think mm. about what I want, of course, and the steps I need to, to do. But I found myself getting a lot of, causing a lot of frustration for myself. Like I didn't fill in my, my to-do list today. Your or tracker. This, or my, right. my goal setting right. tracker or something. And less about goals because what I found for myself was, being fixated on some goal, it, it always took me away from where I am. Right. The, and the that's moment. kind of the purpose of a goal is to get somewhere. Right. Um, and it, it, I wanted to kind of experiment with just being here right now with this. And yes, I'll have goals. I, have a, I run a business. Of course, I right. have plans for the business or to take my family on a holiday or these are things I plan. But rather than goals per se, it, I, I sit down, I think, what experiences do I want to have today? Right, love that. What experiences do I want for this company or this community over the next five years? And it might, it might sound like a play on words, but it's quite different. It's a yeah. different approach. What experiences do I want to have or for the company or for myself or my family? And two, what problems can I solve today? What challenges? Yeah. What, you know, what, what, can, what can we fix today? What can we be creative about yeah. today? 
And these are little things I, I try to keep in mind as I approach. And, it, and it's, it takes some of the, the pressure off, in a sense. I'm not trying to get to a goal, and then if I don't get it, I've failed. Right. Um, so it's just pursue experiences, because ultimately, isn't that what we all want? We want experiences. Yep. You, know, you, you say, oh no, my goal is to get a Ferrari. It's not that. You want an you experience. Want feeling, what is right. the feeling? What is the experience you want? And maybe you can get that without the Ferrari. Absolutely. You know, nothing right. wrong with Ferrari either. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that, that's leadership in action, as you said. So I love that. Which leads then to delivering excellence, right? So what does excellence even mean to you? And how do you deliver excellence every day? Yeah, so um, from my, my, if I'm going to deliver my own excellence from my perspective, um, you know, it, it, again, it ties in all the things we've been talking about. Yeah. As the more present I, I can be, the more authentic I can be, the less of my own agenda that's there, the more I can keep my eye on the vision, on the mission of what the company is doing, then I feel that really allows excellence to, 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 to develop uh, within the organization. Right. Uh, so it's setting up good habits, I think, this kind of good approach to uh, my day, to my work. You know, I also um, I have a pretty regular regime in the morning of doing my you know, mindfulness uh, work and meditation and breath right. work and things like that. Um, but uh, also for where the company is concerned, you know, we're always talking about, I'm, I'm a massive believer in embracing change and probably to a fault. Uh, <laughs> some people probably, uh, I probably change They want some more structure. They probably, well, they probably, <laughs> yeah, Robert, we're right. just getting used to that idea. Now you're already on this idea. It's you know. time to change. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and it's never, it's never uh, contrary to how it might appear at times. It's never about change for, for the sake of change right. or because I'm bored of something. Right. I, I just genuinely, I'm always thinking, is there a better way? Mm. And if there's a better way to do what would, well, it could be an app, it could be a process, it could be some delivery of a service. If there's a better way to do it, why, why stick with the older way? You know, let's explore this new way. And I don't mean, there's always a better way. So I don't mean changing every five right, minutes because right. there's a better way. But just not, not flogging a dead horse, as they say. Not, not, just, not just sticking with something because that's what we decided to do or we, we invested in. If there's a better way, we should explore that. So I'm always trying to think, what is the best way we can maximize potential? And I, and I, I encourage my people too. You know, everyone's got, everyone is so much more powerful than they give themselves credit for. Absolutely. And we just don't know it. And it's, I guess, one of my, my beliefs is you, you've got to know what you want. You've got to know what you want. You've got to go after it. You've got to believe it's possible. And, and then you've got to believe it's possible for you. Because we might say, well, that's great for this guy. You know, he's supernatural, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You know, is it possible for me? And find evidence of where that has been the case. And then the big one is you've got to take massive inspired action. Have to. You know, if you just sit there and, and one of my... Wishing won't make it so, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my concerns with the... Um, and I was into the law of attraction and, and yeah. what's it called? The secret. I, yeah. God, I think I watched that movie. Yeah. 20, All true, but you need action. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. 27 times I think right. I watched it. And there's so much truth in it. Obviously, yeah. it's, a, it's a package marketed thing. You know, they're all saying it, the secret. Like yeah. It's this thing. Um, and in general, it has great, great, great merit. Um, but there was some... People, I think, were, you know, well, just, I'll just visualize it and, and it'll, it will come. And right. they even present it that way sometimes. And right. no, you've got to take massive action. And then the next thing is you've got to, in Japanese martial arts, we call it henka, which means the ability to change, to adapt. Right. You've got to be able like to Like water, change. right? Just yeah. flow with the stream. Take action and then adjust. Adjust yeah. as necessary. Persevere. Keep going. You've got to keep going. And then be, you know, celebrate the little wins along the way and be grateful for what you have. And right. I think that's my little recipe, if you will, and I try to live by that, um, whether it's in my work or personal or, or approaching anything uh, that I'm learning. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. I love that with excellence, too, because you're talking about, look, you can't stand still, right? Because excellence mm. is perpetual, yeah. right? Because if you're standing still, you're actually slipping backwards a lot of times. So yeah, that change yeah. and that evolution and continuing to expand how we deliver excellence is, is really well, important. Well, you, I think there's a part of us as human beings, we, we, we seek you know, some sense of stability. Sure. And uh, we feel it gives us some safety, it gives us you know, some boundaries, and, and we can become complacent in that, as we know. Um, but life doesn't work that way. Everything is in constant flux. We, who you think you are, is in constant change. It's like this, ri you're like a river, and as the saying goes, you can't step in the same river twice. Right. It's always, always moving. Different. And we try to solidify, make permanent this thing which, which we know on some level is impermanent and is always changing. So I think the more we can embrace that idea that everything is in flux and everything is changing, even our ideas, our own ideas of what we're capable of 
they're old ideas. They're not necessarily us. They're not fixed. Right. So it allows us maybe to let go a little bit, surrender to what's actually happening. And I think we might start to see opportunities where before we just saw walls. Absolutely. No, that's amazing. And it's been amazing talking to you today. This has been just fantastic conversation. I think, you know, is there anything else that you'd like? I mean, we could talk all day, right? But God, is there anything else I, you'd like to share with the audience open, today? Don't open that gate because I won't stop. Right. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> that's right. Um, any final words of wisdom or things that you haven't shared yet that you think the audience would be um, interested in hearing? You know, I, 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 yeah, like you say, we'd probably talk for hours on any one of these topics. But uh, for me, Look, I think what we're all searching for deep down, no matter whether it's the, the, the sinner or the saint or the CEO or the, 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 the floor sweeper, we're all seeking peace. That's really what we want. We want peace with ourselves right. and peace in our relationships. Mm. That's ultimately what we're seeking. And I think we're, we're able to touch that. This isn't something we have to achieve after 30 years or 40 years or in a cave in India or something. It can be, it can be experienced and realized right here and now. And I think all we have to do is just open ourselves up, relax, surrender to this. Reality is a wonderful teacher and when you argue with her, you lose every time, <laughs> every, time. every single time. And just embrace this and you know, uh, just be present and open with people, engage with life. And I think everything else falls into place after that. Yes, there's ups and downs and good times and bad times and that's all part of the journey. But uh, I think the more we're present, the more we engage with it, the more we can um, enjoy the ride. I love that. If they want to enjoy the ride with you more and find out more about your services and get a hold of you, how can they best do that? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm in the process, my side hustle, if you will, is establishing a coaching and speaking business, um, which is taking shape at the moment. This guy is helping me do that. And That's true. <laughs> um, but so right now, if you'd like to check us out on about more about our recruitment firm, which is largely based in Japan, um, the uh, the website is Zensho Agency, Z E N S H O Zensho Agency dot com. You can read about what we do, and hopefully, uh, once I get my my other business up and running, um, I'll be able to make an announcement, or, or JP might be able to help me share share that uh, those details with everyone. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Robin. Thanks so much. It's such JP. a pleasure yeah. having you on the show. Thank all of you for joining us here as well. For more great resources to help you become your best self, including free worksheets and downloads, make sure to check out thebuildframework.com. That's it for this episode. I'm JP. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.